Sports. Time to bring in Mike Cosi. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm all right. All right. So now, <clears throat> uh, before we get into the uh, razzle-dazzle and big thing, hear what happened to Patrick Ewing? Yeah, but you know what it is? What is it? You're getting half the story. You only get half the story, and that's the problem with the media. And I have this from first-hand source of a relative of mine who's a big shot in MSG security. Do you want to know the truth? Uh, what was the truth from your friend? Not my friend, my blood, okay. my relative. Your relative, okay. The truth is that there's a protocol that has to be followed because of the powers that be in New York for people, any person, that enters Madison Square Garden. And Mr. Ewing did not want to abide by the protocol. So he was, not, he was denied access to the building until he followed protocol. That is the truth. All right. Well, anyway. So Mr. Ewing thought he was above the law because of who he is, like a lot of people do these days. And Madison Square Garden Security, doing the job that they're paid to do, wouldn't let him in. I can imagine. Uh, I, I could never imagine if Mickey Mantle were still alive that he'd be stopped at Yankee Stadium. You don't think so, huh? I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. I, I don't, don't think you're right. I don't think, I don't think Tom. I got this from a first-hand source. It doesn't matter if you're Patrick Ewing, Mickey Mantle, or Mickey Mouse. You have to follow protocol. That's no. the laws that are being used by the MSG security, enforced by the powers that be that run New York City and New York State. All right. Well, like I said, uh, I, I, I don't think that that would happen to Tom Brady. I, I mean, I can go through a list of whole people that it, it wouldn't happen. Well, it happens to the 2,000 people every night that go watch the Knicks or the Rangers play. And if they don't do it, they don't, they're not allowed access to the building. I was told it's harder to work for the 2,000 people that go to watch the Knicks and the Rangers because of protocol than when they have the 22,000 that go in there every night. All right. I Just know. telling you what I know. I know, but I still think that when somebody's a franchise player that basically is part of the team uh, and in the history of the team. Well, uh, if he happens protocols. to test positive for COVID and he, he has a temperature, he's not supposed to be allowed in the building. He gets tested. I mean, it wouldn't he, let you in, would they? No, but he gets tested every day because he's a coach in, in the NCAA. So, uh, you know, he's going to. Well, I, I go to my school every morning and I have to take my temperature every morning. Doesn't matter. All right. Well, enough of that. Anyways, I just think that uh, certain certain people who do certain things for franchises. Um, well, uh, there should be. There's one set of rules. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you come off the cross and walk into Jim Madison Square Garden. You have to follow protocol. Nah, they wouldn't stop Jesus. All right. Uh, in in hockey, the Islanders they just keep rolling on five three over the Devils. Yeah, easy game last night. Four nothing. They were up and. Uh, I went to get something out of the kitchen, and the Rangers scored. The Devils scored two quick goals, and the announcers were getting all giddy all over themselves. And before my fanny was warm in the chair again, the Islanders put another one in. The Islanders are playing very, very good hockey. Uh, the de the Devils are like the Walking Dead. All right. So speaking about the Walking Dead, uh, Bruins shut out the Rangers for nothing last night. They stink. <laughs> they really do. It's uh, it's sad to see. I, I don't know. All right. In basketball. Uh, Patrick Ewing aside, uh, uh, the uh, Bucks beat the Knicks last night. Uh, so uh, uh, they start off the second half of the season with a big L. And uh, in baseball, I don't know. I mean, I, once again, I watched baseball yesterday, and it was just, it's just nice to watch it. Um, and you know what? I don't care what game's on when I'm watching it. It's just I feel warmer, and we had a beautiful day yesterday. So it was it was nice to see it was nice to see baseball yesterday. Watch the uh, the weather's going to be terrible by the time they open up the regular season. <laughs> but it was nice to Always see. Always is. Yeah, I snow. I mean, seventy degrees in the middle of March isn't the normal. No, no matter how nice it feels, it's not the normal. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, do it. You uh, have any racing for the for this weekend? Yeah, we got a couple things for racing. Um, the cancel culture has reached horse racing too, because there's these various social media sites that talk about racing and they think they know what they're talking about. And as soon as you beg to differ with their opinion, out comes the army attacking you. So they tried to attack me, but me being me, I attacked back. And guess what? They didn't shoot back after that. So when you step on these creatures and with facts, they can't come back. And this was all talking about Bobby Baffert's horse last week, um, um, Life is Good. 
and the quality of racing at Gulfstream Park, which is garbage. When you run $6,250 races on your Saturday card, it's garbage. And they can't handle the, they can't handle the truth like they said in the movie. Back to racing for the weekend at Oaklawn Park this weekend. Um, they have a prep, the Rebel, the Grade 2 Rebel, a mile of 16th, which is the 11th race. A couple other races. The 7th race is the Essex, running for a half million, mile of 16th for all the horses. Um, there looks to be some speed in here with Tax and Silver State, who are two horses that probably will be um, favorite and co-favorite. Um, you can pick either one. I would use the Danny Gargan horse, Tax, in here. And the good thing about running in Arkansas is you can run on Lasix. They don't, want to, they don't want to further handicap your horse by taking the Lasix away. So this is a legitimate race. Um, I see Tax and Silver State showing some speed here. And I think the horse down on the inside, Harper's First Ride, who uh, comes off two impressive wins at Laurel, only to go down to Gulfstream to run in that fake uh, invitational $7 million race they have with no Lasix. So... Here's a horse that won by three, won by four, and then lost by 50 lengths without the Lasix. So you tell me Lasix doesn't affect the way a horse runs, the way that they breathe. Harper's first ride is my top pick in the, in the Oakland Park race. Um, he gets his Lasix back. He gets some speed in front of him, and I expect him maybe to get a little bit better of a price than you normally would because of that loss by 50 lengths because some people don't know how to read a racing form. So Harper's first ride is going to be my pick in the Essex with tax underneath. Um, the 10th race in Oaklawn is the Hot Springs, six furlongs on the dirt. Um, Whitmore's in here, the surprise winner of the Breeders' Cup uh, sprint. He's not getting a dime of my money. Um, <laughs> when a horse shows up and pops a big race like that for the first time in a year, um, I'm not coming back off of a layoff. So Whitmore's going to be the morning line favorite. He beats me, he beats me, God bless him. Um, two horses I'm looking at in here. One is the four-horse engaged, trained by Steve Asmussen. He's a question mark. Um, he can run a big race. Um, he's lightly raced over to the 2020 season. Uh, but if you go back to 2019, um, he has run some really big races. Training good for Asmussen. Um, you could throw out his 2020 races, whatever. was Something wasn't right with this horse. Came back off the layoff. Ran a nice race. Expect him to run bigger tomorrow. Uh, but my top pick is going to be the two-horse Flagstaff. Um, this horse has a couple of sprints on his resume at Oaklawn Park. Ran very well in it. Um, got beat by Whitmore in last April in this race. Um, training very, very well for John Sadler. Um, gets Rosario back, who rode him only one time and ran, rode him very well to a second-place finish in a grade three. Um, Flagstaff at 9-2 to two is definitely my play in this race uh, with Engage rounding out the exacta. And then going to the Rebel, which is the 11th race. Down on the rail, Caddo River is going to be my, it's not going to be my top pick, but will be the favorite. Bears interest comes from Maiden Special Weight right into the Smarty Jones, draws off to win by 10. Um, can be any kind of horse. Um, meets a better quality of horse here today, tomorrow. And uh, just going to be too cheap for my blood. I don't, I don't take the cheap favorites, and the, the, this horse has to prove to me he can run. Uh, two horses I'm looking at is the eight-horse super stock trained by Asmussen. Comes off a layoff last seen in, in the street sense at Churchill Downs when he ran second to King Fury as the favorite. Ran third to Essential Quality, who's one of the favorites in the Kentucky Derby. Um, off the layoff, training well at fairgrounds. I'm going to use super stock in my exacta. Uh, but my top pick is going to be the six-horse, keep me in mind. Another horse coming off the layoff for Diodoro. Uh, last time out, won the Jockey Cub Cup at Churchill Downs prior to that at Keeneland, ran behind Essential Quality. There's that name again. Um, has a very good closing kick. Um, this horse is trainer, is very good off the bench, and very good with a horse that won a last start. So the six, keep me in mind, is my top pick in the Rebel, and the eight super stock will round out my exacta. Maybe I'll throw Caddo River in if, if keep me in mind's price is good enough, but if keep me in mind's bet down to three to one or five to two. Um, I don't need a $12 exacta. All right. I guess we'll check with you on Monday and see how you did on all these picks. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. Have a good weekend, Mike. You too. Take care. Mike Cosby with the Check on Sports this morning here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.